Hello and welcome to SSP Meeting Attendees. Thank you so much for dropping into this Taylor and Francis session using open research innovation to support and grow your society membership. As we go, please type any questions or ideas into the chat. We hope you'll also stop by our journals and books exhibits in the Marketplace Gallery for more info on open research. We know that early career society members face a range of challenges as they enter the academic job market. In addition to budget cuts, hiring freezes and high competition, early career researchers are navigating expectations to publish or perish within a traditional publishing environment that's often slow, complicated and not very transparent. Increasingly, the principles of open research are providing avenues for early career researchers to get recognition and credit for all of their contributions to knowledge production. This helps them to better document their research outputs while combating common publishing obstacles. Today, we'll hear from several leaders at the Association for Medical Education in Europe, or AMI, an association that has pioneered its own open research publishing platform. They'll share how the open model of MedEd Publish supports younger members and early career researchers, not only in their publishing journeys, but also as a venture for learning and development. Open access peer review offers benefits to young researchers and early career academics because of the collaborative peer review process. Instead of sending your article to a journal where the peer review process is anonymous and potentially shrouded in secrecy, there's a collaborative process that allows for an open peer review process. This assists early career researchers in having a collaborative dialogue with peer reviewers. It also gets your work in front of an audience faster than the traditional model. In addition, an open peer review process and an open access process allows your work to be viewed and cited more often. This helps to get your work in front of the audience and out and gets your name known faster. I'm Claire McRae and I'm Amy's Education Officer. Amy's a membership organisation for health professions educators around the world and we offer support to our members through a range of services, including online training, conferences, and academic publishing. One of the journals that we publish is MedEd Publish. MedEd Publish is an open access post-publication peer reviewed journal. What that means is that anybody can access the journal from anywhere around the world. Um, they can read the articles, and because we publish under a Creative Commons license, they're free to um, reuse and adapt the articles in any way they want. They don't need to pay and there is no cost, so they can be freely used for teaching and research. All you need is a stable internet connection. MedEd Publish was established originally in 2012, essentially as a repository of content that could be shared and used by people within our community of practice. It was relaunched in 2016 as a fully fledged e-journal open access, online available, and with other features that were much more interactive. And in autumn of 2021, it will be transferred to the F1000 platform. Now, articles can be submitted by uh, anybody, members or non-members of AMI, that's fine. We feature post-publication peer review, an interesting innovation which reduces editorial bias means that neither the editors nor the main reviewers can prevent publication so long as it meets the criteria around formatting and scope of um, practice. So this also allows for greater uh, interaction between reviewers, authors and the general readership because there are comments and review facilities that everybody can contribute to and learn from. I'd like to share my story with you about publishing an article at MedEd Publish. In um, 2015, I finished my PhD. I'm a qualitative researcher that uses um, narrative to interpret people's stories and build understanding. So I finished my PhD and I wrote a summary of my PhD in an article, so I went from 
80,000 words to whatever it was, three to 5,000 words, and I sent it off to one of the big journals. And I was really disheartened when I got a rejection back. And it was frustrating because, um, you know, one, one reviewer said that they didn't read beyond the methods and another said they didn't understand the context of the study. So it took me a little while to pick myself up, brush myself off and learn from the feedback and I applied to MedEd Publish because one of the things that was really important to me was sharing the stories of the interns who I interviewed for my study, sharing them with the broader medical community and with other junior doctors so that they could learn from it and their supervisors so that they could learn from it too and that we could improve the learner's journey, in this case the junior doctor, so we could use education as a mechanism to improve patient care. So I wrote my article and sent it off to MedEd Publish, um, feeling very vulnerable because I'd already had a knockback and then this, um, when you get published to MedEd Publish, it goes straight online and you're vulnerable to feedback from others in a public place. So I had a bit of a sleepless night telling myself I wouldn't go and check um, what the response was, but I gave up around 2 a.m. and went online. I was so relieved to see that I'd received positive reviews and also that people were really, really interested. So what's been really nice for me is that the sharing of the stories, um, my paper has had over 6,000 downloads now and I've actually had junior doctors write to me saying that it's made them feel less alone. So that's been really important to me that my research hasn't been siloed, that it's been shared and that people are able to reflect on their own practice um, and, and introduce some changes that have made them feel less alone or have made it easier in their working environment to um, express emotion and compassion in the context of what I write about. What's been really nice is that um, by publishing that one paper through MedEd, I had transparent feedback from reviewers and also I went on to write another paper about the whole vulnerability and jubilation of being published and that was a continued conversation but also it's in a public space and place where others can learn and comment on it, other reviewers and the transparency I think is really really important. Um, being a reviewer and reviewing online, there's also a vulnerability around that as well. So you're not going to write comments like, I didn't read beyond the methods in that forum without justifying why and maybe providing some constructive feedback. So I think the transparency is really important. The other outcome for me, which was really helpful, is that because my paper won, I think it was the best publication for MedEd Publish for the year 2018-2019 for Amy, um, I won the opportunity to attend Amy's conference, which COVID kind of made that difficult, but, but it it allowed me to extend my community of practice and my network of people and to get my research known, so to create a profile around my research. The other thing then back in my workplace here at the University of Notre Dame in Fremantle in Western Australia, um, I was invited to apply for the Deputy Provost Award, I think it was, and I won the best paper for that, which meant I won $2,000, which allowed me, pre-COVID, to go to a conference in Singapore, again, where I met up with a lot of um, the overseas people from Amy and MedEd Publish, and was able to, again, build my network and be involved in projects like this. So there's been a, a ripple-on effect for me that you know, you can't put a value on. It's been absolutely wonderful from a learning point of view, but also um, 
from a, a bigger conversation point of view in that some of the reviewers that re reviewed my initial paper then reviewed my additional paper and that was an extended conversation and so you don't get that when um, there's not that level of transparency. One of the things we've been really keen to do with the journal is to encourage early career researchers to publish with us. Um, and we've tried to do, do this in a number of ways. So we've tried to reduce the barriers to publication. We've offered training and support both as authors and reviewers so that they can get more engaged with the model. And we've also got this community aspect. So they're not just publishing with MedEd Publish, they're hopefully becoming part of the AMI community. We all of us have to start somewhere. And this is an opportunity to just submit work, which will then be given a lot of feedback, which is hopefully very educational in itself. So we offer a venue that removes many of the barriers for early career researchers in some other journals, where the bias is towards larger names, uh, well-known researchers and uh, cutting edge research. What we do is, so long as the article is in the scope of health professional education, is in comprehensive English and which meets all the legal and ethical requirements, we can publish it. So this includes uh, negative findings, small studies, replication studies, really just innovations, new methodologies, great ideas, anything in that. And maybe importantly for early career researchers, particularly those from um, parts of the world where they don't necessarily have access to the same education opportunities, we'll take articles where the language or the structure is not yet polished and we'll let the reviewers pick up on that and give them the feedback and the opportunity to improve their article. One of the big bonuses for us of our um, public commenting feature is the opportunity to engage with the community. Um, so we do encourage our members and non-members to create an account and this gives them the facility to enter discussion with the reviewers and the authors. We're really keen to speak to these people and we, we try to make a feature of this at our conference. Um, we encourage authors and um, reviewers to come and talk to us at the conference stand to speak to the editors of the journal um, and to find out more about the broader activities that Amy's involved in, not just the publishing element. The benefits are not all one-sided. Amy benefits from um, this relationship too. Um, early career researchers are our future membership. Um, if we don't engage with them, then we're losing the chance to develop those relationships with the group that will be our core membership in the future. Um, and not only that, we also have a an opportunity to um, engage in a degree of talent spotting so we can pick out those um, authors or reviewers who are doing really high quality, exciting work um, and we can encourage them actively to get more involved in society activities, either by becoming a fellow, um, by offering them some mentoring, for example, um, by encouraging them maybe to tutor on our online courses or to get involved in all kinds of other activities. There are, of course, also challenges associated with encouraging very junior researchers to publish. Um, we tend to find that the more junior they are, the less they understand the publishing landscape. Um, we need to be really careful to avoid any um, suggestion of predatory publishing practices. Because our articles are not reviewed prior to publication and because we charge an article processing fee to cover our publishing costs, um, we need to be sure that authors understand that model and that publishing with us does not guarantee that their article is going to be um, recommended or subsequently indexed. Um, that's a, a lot of medical students or um, junior doctors are looking for points in various job application schemes and it's their job to check that our journal meets the criteria um, that the job application scheme is looking for. 
Um, but it's our job to make sure that all of our policies and processes are upfront and really transparent and easy to understand so as that um, we're not misleading anybody into what to expect when they publish with us. Another challenge for this group is obviously the cost of publishing. Um, they are the least likely to be able to afford to pay from their personal funds. Um, and particularly for very junior researchers, um, there's limited access to um, grants or scholarship to cover their publishing costs. For the um, PhD or master's group, increasingly their grant will cover open access publishing because it's recognised that that comes with a cost. Um, but we are actively exploring opportunities to um, introduce grants or scholarships for more junior authors. So the next steps for MedEd Publish are quite exciting. Um, in autumn of 2021, we are moving to a publishing platform hosted by F1000 Research, which is an imprint of the Taylor and Francis Group. Um, for us, this means that we can pass all of the hard work of publishing on to somebody who has expertise in that area and let us focus on what we are best at, which is the educational aspect of publication. The F1000 model means we'll retain our own journal, it will still be the same look and feel, but it will offer a much better user experience to the um, authors and reviewers who work with us. One of the big advantages for us of moving to F1000 is the ability to integrate with other services and in particular um, Publons and Orchid, which are um, becoming the industry standard ways of um, recognising the contribution that reviewers are making and also allowing authors or readers to check up on the credentials of the people leaving the reviews. So um, knowing who they are a bit better, you can choose what weighting you want to, give, want to give to their feedback. Moving to the F1000 platform will allow us to expand the range of support services offered to authors and reviewers. For example, we might have mentoring, online training modules, or conference workshops on how to write and how to review uh, research articles. Specifically for early career researchers, um, the move gives us the opportunity to review our current editorial board. Um, that will become an advisory board and we'll be able to be much more flexible in the types of roles and um, remits that we have as part of that board. So for example, we can um, recruit early career researchers um, to help us engage better with that section of the um, publishing space. And to provide us with a fresher perspective on um, topics of interest to that group from a um, readership perspective. Now we can also offer a broader range of publishing opportunities. So for example, we're very interested in uh, short presentations and poster presentations at conferences. These are often very interesting, they are an important part of the professional development journey of researchers, and yet they're often not published in a particularly accessible way. So by Improving access to these, we think we might be able to improve uh, early career researchers' applications for, say, publishing grants or further research grants, because there is a, a visible product out there. By passing all of the publishing services to F1000, we can focus much more on our scholarly activities. Um, so this opens up our capacity to support our authors and reviewers better, for example, through training, through providing um, materials, by organising um, discussion sessions at our conferences um, and all of the other educational activities that we think we do best. Partnership with an OA publisher like F1000 Research enables societies and associations like AMI to support early career researchers ensure author submission routes are simple and funder compliant, and pass benefits back to their members. To explore simple, sustainable ways to bring open research options to your community, visit our website at 
bit.ly forward slash sspco21. Thanks again for tuning in to this breakout session from Taylor and Francis, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. If you have some open space in your schedule, drop by our virtual exhibits. We'd love to have a chat with you.